big day, this is a great day and thank you so much for keeping me company because this is the long, long anticipated Rapiculus Lalium potting up marathon of 2021. Some of them I've been waiting to pot up since May, but they were in no condition to be potted up. So they were babied throughout the summer. Some of them I got recently and they're just ready to go. And one of them I just got two days ago and it is such pristine condition, it is ready to go as well. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six are from Floralia. The first three came in May. The other ones came in September. And this one over there is the Kolnagoi, the brand new arrival from Akaren Orchids and Tokyo World Mark. And then here is my entire media bar that I will be using. So there's not really much to see in this angle, but as I take them out of the hob material, I want to show you the different stages as to why I'm okay with potting these up at this point in time. And then you can see that I've already crocked my semi-hydro setup with large leka because I'm going to be running out of lava rock, large lava rock, and I need that for another new arrival. As I have a lot of large leka, that is what I'm going to use for crocking. They will be fine with that in place because I already had one Rapiculus Lelia do really, really well. And I forgot the bloom and shiny eye, the little teeny tiny bloom and shiny eye, which we will address first because this one is interesting. That makes it eight. How can I forget my little bloom and shiny eye? But anyway, yeah, so the Lelia Flava used to be in leka and she did really well, so I'm not bothered using leka as crocking. Normally I would use large lava rock, but I'm not at this point going to be buying any new media in. I'm going to use my large lava rock to stabilize the orchid in the pot instead of a stake. So I have plenty of media that I can work with and we will get on with it right now. We'll pick out the bloom and shiny eye first because I want to do something that's going to be a little bit different. Based on the circumstances she finds herself in, putting you into a different angle and let's get going. I'm so happy to get this done. So here's little bloom and shiny eye. Look at this little trooper. Got a new growth coming and roots. This is amazing. I've been waiting for a long time for this. I couldn't repot sooner. So the root has gone through the hob material and I'm not going to be fandangling that root out. What I'm going to do is cut around the hob material and pot it up with that. We'll do that potting up together, and then if I find anything super interesting with the other repots, I will stop the camera and show you. I have chosen this cute eight centimeter pot for my little bloom and shiny eye, and she'll be happy in that for a long, long time. It is a semi-hydro setup, as they all are. My tag is already in, so I'm not gonna be messing around with sticking the tag in after the job is done and stabilize the orchid and maybe dislodge her again that way. And I've crocked the pot with the dirty lecker, but the small chips that I have from that dirty lecker separation, might as well use it up. The roots normally don't go that deep, but if they do, that's okay. They're tough little cookies, they can take it. First of all, let's make sure we don't damage that root and cut the hob material around it off. And it's okay, the hob material can resemble lichen and all kinds of silly little moss that they grow in, which is perfect. Not something I would do as a standard procedure, but in this case, my roots are more important than hob material and fiddling around it. What I'm trying to achieve here very carefully is not to crack that root by the weight of the hob material and make sure that I'm not cutting into anything else that is back there. And I take another bit off, just that little square right here. Right, so we got that one out of the way. That was pretty straightforward, but I did want to show you why, if I was gonna speed up the rest of the process, why I'm leaving hob material on. And this is exciting. This one arrived in May. As per usual, my 60-40 ratio of Akadama and grit is gonna go into the pot for the wicking purposes. So I've got 60% grit and 40% akadama. Just trying to hold the orchid in position to see how low do I want her? How high can I raise her? Because I will be top dressing with lava rock. 
and I've got her in the middle because these little guys have surprised me in the past. You think they have one direction of growth and then suddenly they're like, nah, I think I'll throw out another growth around the back. So that is why she is in the middle. There we go. Hob material and all. That's a first for me. I don't normally have hob material around the roots of my Rapiculus lalias, but again, the root is more important than me trying to get that all fiddled out. I'm not, I'm not bothered. So there we are with that little one. We'll put you away. And then I'm going to top dress this one with very small lava rock because she has small roots. So if any of the roots were to come out at the surface at some point where she has new root nubbins, she doesn't have to find the way into the pot by crawling over large lava rock pieces. So based on the root size, that is my top dressing. With this one, I could have also just gone with grit, but seeing as I am really, really been pedantic about separating out my lava rock sizes for these rapiculous lalias, and I've been waiting to do this for so long, now that I've got it all separated, I'm going to take advantage and use it. There we go. Now she might appear a bit wobbly in the pot, but that is not a problem. She is not going to be moved from her location once I put her there. That's one down, seven to go. Lucky number seven. I did a video regarding root size and my decision-making process with what size pot I use for long, long term, no disturbing of the orchid in the pot and I will link that video as a card or in the description. This is what is left of my millery. It is not good at all. Very, very desiccated. Very, very weak little orchid, but we've got roots and a new growth coming, which is amazing. And I'm going to put up a picture of the millery from Ian, one of the viewers of my channel. And I am really, really impressed with the quality of his plant. So I'm gonna put that up as a comparison to what you just saw with mine. This is little guanense. It was a three bulb piece, but it is now just a two bulb piece after I cleaned it up. The other bulb is in ICU to see if I can propagate it with another growth. Yeah, I doubt it, it's very, very small. But this one is nonetheless still going to go into the pot I had allocated for it because once again, I'm banking on the roots and that is what I'm putting my focus in with regards to pot size. And here are teeny tiny little nubbins I hope that is obvious on camera already, so we're good to go. She might be a little bit set back, but that's the case with all of them. My little itty bitty Sophronitis coccinia. The roots are viable, so I'm going to support them in media as opposed to me trying to baby her over. This is as good as it's gonna get for a little while and I'm gonna take care of her same way as a Rapiculus Lelia and hope that she will survive and I don't mess her up. Here's little Kolnagoi. Something I wanted to mention that I only saw after I had settled down with this newcomer here. All the pots that come from a cairn, 
they have the label stapled into the pot, which is amazing because then it's not like people take them out and then you get a mislabeled orchid because, oh, oops, now where did that label go? So while you're in the nursery, you can see the name of the orchid very, very clearly, but it's not like you can take it out and avoid confusion that way. That's amazing, I love that. Nice detail. So here, if the bark stays on the root, so be it, it can stay. No problems. She is an amazing little orchid. You see the difference between what I had to baby over since May and coming from Brazil and everything, where these actually originate, and you'd sort of wonder, well, yes, transportation, travel stress, etc., makes all part and parcel of the quality of orchid that you're getting. But no, it's also what the nursery does with the orchid in situ. So my orchids coming from Brazil should have much less transportation shock or look a lot better because I'm getting them directly from the source. They're not going from one nursery to the next to the next and they come in such a bad state. So yeah, that's a big difference. And I have to tell you, I appreciate this quality here. I really do. Makes me smile. I think they look amazing, even though some don't as a plant as such. But I like the uniformity of my pots, like little ducks in a row. None of them, of course, are stable in the pot, but with time, I will be fussing a little bit more with how they situate themselves now that they're always wet. And if I need to, then I will add more large pieces of lava rock around each and every one of them. But for the time being, gosh, eight. Checked off the list. Really, really happy. Very pleased that we've gotten to this point, especially with the ones that arrived in May. So thank you for watching. Thank you for your company. Thank you so much for your support, for subscribing, and just taking time watching my videos, commenting and all that good stuff. I really appreciate it. Have yourselves a beautiful day. I'm going to put these now in their forever home, unless they tell me otherwise. <laughs> Have a wonderful day. Please stay safe and take care. Bye.